We spent time at Christie's Pizza on Salisbury Beach in Massachusetts. This is the pizza of my childhood. When you ask for a, a piece of e um, extra cheese, they slap a slice of provolone on it and call it a day. But I don't care. It's the pizza of my childhood and every bite is nostalgic. Hi Booktube, it's Kim at Kaybacker's Books and this is uh, my bookish week for the week ending September 5th, 2020. Uh, this week we did a lot of outdoor time again and I have some short video clips and some photos to show you. Hope you enjoy those. If the weather's been awesome in New England and it's it was August, it's now September, but in August it was so, there were so few days of ultra hot weather that we were able to get outside so much and it's been gorgeous. So we've been taking advantage of that and we'll continue to do that. So let's get to the books. week I finished two books and three short stories and I have another one to read today from my buddy read which I'll continue to tell you about. The first book I finished was a buddy read with Gemma from Read a Book Gem and we decided to read this book in a week and finished it in like three days. <laughs> Four days maybe. Um, it was it was that fast and it's Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. This is a Queenie is a hot mess however she's she's a likable character and this book is about a 25 year old woman named Queenie who lives in London she is she has just ended a three year long relationship with Tom who she believes that you know is the love of her life they were meant to get married to be together Queenie is black and Tom is white and throughout the novel there's a lot of language and commentary on Queenie's um, propensity to date white men. And some of her friends are like, well, wh what do you expect? The, the conflict that she's having, what do you expect? You're not gonna get that with a black man because the two of you are gonna be able to relate so much more closely and have so much more in common. But Queenie attra is attracted to who she's attracted to and loves who she loves. But <sighs> this book by other reviewers has been described as one bad decision after another after another. And Queenie is so self-destructive, and she is, but there's there's definitely a, a reason hovering in the background as to why she makes the choices that she makes. When she, when she is breaking up with Tom, she has to move out, and her her continual dial monologue, internal monologue, leads you to believe that you know there's a chance that Tom's going to come back. There's a misunderstanding. Um, you know, she suffered something. And then you start to realize a little further on the story, she may be quite the unreliable narrator. What, what is the real story? And then as the, as the story develops, she decides, makes one bad choice after another of different men to sleep with, to hook up with. So we watch we watched this self-destructive pattern throughout the story. And it's not until you get towards the end that things start to turn around for her in a very concrete way. But the whole time I'm reading the book, I kept thinking, there is quite a bit of stereotyping in here. Um, there's a lot of situations that have to do with race relations that are kind of dropped into the story that don't really belong or they don't really match up with the narrative. And the events, Queenie takes part in a Black Lives Matter march, which is against the character because she has some deep anxiety about being in a room full of people, in a, in a large event full of a lot of people. She has some pretty substantial anxiety about that, and yet she manages to march, and it, it didn't make sense for the character. 
there's a lot of discussion about um, race as a character, as a black character on her job, in dating, in a black family. And I think the author was trying to add too many elements into the story. This is a very fast contemporary novel. It's not, it doesn't go too deep. And I think that's one of its issues is that adding all of those events and those issues, those very serious issues worthy of examination is a little too much for this story. But I did like the, the novel. I liked reading it. I gave it a three stars because it was, a, it was such a fast read. I didn't, I wanted to keep reading to find out what happens. The writing is not anything spectacular. It's, it's, it's fine. It's very much... Um, a contemporary novel. It was a very enjoyable book to read and um, Gemma and I I think both felt the same way. We both really enjoyed it but had some of the same same qualms about it. The other, the second novel I finished this week is Emily Henry's Beach Read. This is the story of January Andrews and Augustus Everett, Gus. They are both writers. January is a romance novel writer and Augustus Gus is a literary fiction novel writer. And they went to college together and they both kind of, they both had, you know, kind of had a hookup incident and didn't have sex, but they, you could tell that they really were into each other. But that was it. And they had some somewhat of an antagonistic relationship in college. And January's father has just passed away. Um, she's learned something about her father. She's inherited a house. The house is on a lake. It's not a beach house on the ocean. It's on Lake Michigan or Lake Superior, one of those. I think this is set in Michigan. This is not like a, a summer beach read that a, a, you would take with you as you go to lay out to get a suntan. And the, the cover and the title is so completely misleading. That's my biggest issue with this book. It's, it's, this has nothing, this cover and title has nothing to do with the story. They're, they end up, the house that she inherits is right next door to Gus's house on the lake. So they're, they're neighbors and their windows line up exactly so they can see into each other's houses completely. They, there's a lot of, um, this is, they're living in this little town where everybody knows everybody and, um, January makes her way to a bookstore where Gus happens to walk in and she soon realizes he's her neighbor. They start to interact. There's a there's a situation that gets set up in the beginning of the book where they meet and they talk and they end up forming somewhat of an antagonistic friendship and they each decide to make a bet that they're going to each write the other's format of novel. So Gus is going to try to write a romance novel and January is going to try to write a literary fiction novel and shenanigans ensue. This was so much fun. This was such a fun book. I loved the story. The best part about it is the banter between the two of them. It's very sarcastic, dark humor, funny, and you can you can believe that real people would talk to each other that way, especially people who will eventually fall in love. Yes, it's a romance, so it's happily ever after. And that's what's supposed to happen, but how they get there, how it moves along, how it gets to that point is so much fun. It's a great story. I really got caught up in the story. I read the book in two days and not because it's a fluffy beach read, but because it's so interesting and I did not want to put it down. If you need something fun and light and interesting with a good story and really likable transparent real characters this is that's the book for you really loved it so i read two short stories out of annie prue's uh close range wyoming stories i'm reading this with freddie as a buddy read from freddie from sluggish reader and we're reading three stories a week and the last two stories i read were bizarre but this very short story is called the blood bay and the blood bay refers to a horse a bay blood bay horse the very first part of the story, and this is a super short one, it's only a couple of pages. There are three cowboys riding through the winter um, landscape in Wyoming. It's bleak, it's freezing, it's biting, it's dangerous. And they come upon a dead cowboy frozen to death in the snow. And he has these great cowboy boots on. These They were custom made, custom stamped. 
And one of the one of the cowboys that comes upon this this frozen cowboy in the snow says, "Hey, I like those boots. I want them." Well, they can't get the boots off of his frozen feet. So the cowboy decides, "I'm just going to cut off his legs and bring them with me, and I'll thaw them out and then take the boots." <laughs> and that's the very beginning of the story. And in four pages, she has so much atmosphere and so much description of the unemotional aspect, the bleakness, the starkness of their environment. It's lonely, it's dark, it's freezing. And it's it's so ironic because the characters themselves have so little emotion and you you don't really hear any thought process of them. It's it's all atmosphere. She can write sentences that that push you right in there. You're there in the scene. And all of the stories so far have that same the, the same themes of loneliness and, and danger and bleakness, but so far they're exceptional stories. And then the other one I read is People in Hell Just Want a Drink of Water. This is the story of two families. Um, this is the Dunmires and the Tinsleys, and the Dunmires are a family with nine sons, all of them ranchers. I think one of them ends up dying. It's not part of the narrative, not important part of the narrative. They all become very similar to each other. They're very, they're, they're bleak, they're, they're hardworking, unemotional. They are satisfied with staying on their family ranch their whole lives and working the ranch. And then the Tinsleys have three siblings. One of them is his firstborn is Rasmussen. And he wants more for his life. He wants to go out and travel the world and read books and learn and learn about ships and the ocean. Um, there's there's a tragedy and then there's a connection between the two families that's extremely bleak and horrific. And then I also read a John Cheever story. I listened to this on audiobook called The Sorrows of Jin, which was narrated by Meryl Streep. Awesome. Loved her narration. Hated when I read I listened to a John Cheever story that was narrated by the author. Can't stand his voice. The Sorrows of Jin is about a four-year-old, a, not a four-year-old, a fourth grader named Amy and her wealthy suburban parents. These, it's the, it's again, it's John Cheever. So it's the setup of wealthy alcoholic parents who party, go to parties, go to dinners. Uh, the young girl is left alone much of the time with, with one servant after another, after another. Servants don't last long in this house. She starts emptying the gin bottles because she hears and knows that um, alcohol is damaging and dangerous. So as she em constantly empties the gin bottles, their pa her parents accuse each of the servants of stealing. And it it's such a commentary on um, family and, again, John Cheever. It's all about alcohol and alcoholism, the dangers of alcohol. This poor girl that is left to her own devices most of the time, who only has servants to keep her company and to provide any emotional closeness. Um, I thought the story was really well written and I loved listening to Meryl narrate it. She acts it out. It was awesome. What am I currently reading? I'm still reading Paradise by Toni Morrison. Hope to get that finished soon. I am listening to The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock on audio and reading along with the text. Loving it. Um, that is narrated by my favorite, Juliet Stevenson. She's an absolutely spectacular narrator and I cannot get enough of that. And I am and will be continuing to read these truths by Jill Lepore. So that's it for my bookish week. Um, hope you like the video snips. Hope you like the photos. Comment down below what you think about any of the books or stories I mentioned. Any commentary you have, good or bad. Subscribe if you haven't already, please. And thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.